Yo, what is up, YouTubers? I'm your host, W. Hughes Reacts. Welcome to my channel. We're going to react to Five Reasons Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Sucks. And it's, of course, by Willie Juice. It's sorry if I mispronounce your name. Um, If you guys want to check out the original video, the link will be in the description. With that being said, let go. Here's what I don't understand. Every social media I go to, Instagram and Facebook, the most Mighty Morphin stuff I see is season one. Not no season two or season three. I mean, come on. This is why I hate Mighty Morphin season one because one, it gets too much praise nowadays. That's all everybody thinks about in season one. What about season two and three? You can't show them no love? What the heck? You know, the White Ranger and the movie and stuff like that. But um, no one really thinks outside of season one when you think of the typical person. And honestly, they're missing out on what, what ended up being a far better version of the show that, you know, started it all. Season Not three is wrong, season three. Uh, I'm always, you know, I'm always going to be grateful to MPR I for am being too. the catalyst that started the franchise and, you know, but to say that it's ultimately just the best one just purely out of nostalgia and not no, actually ain't. basing it off anything and especially when you can't compare it to anything else because you automatically assume that anything that came after it is awful yeah it just kind of doesn't sit well with me so yeah so let's go ahead uh, five reasons the first one we got is nothing plot related happens thank you unless so it involves Tommy and this is most prevalent in the first season, but it does carry over into the second season. By the third season, it's mostly gone, but a lot of the plots, uh, plot focused stuff does end up focusing more on Tommy. It makes sense, given Tommy was the most popular character, mm -hmm. and obviously he's the one that was bringing the ratings in, but it really just. But, and yet, he's overrated. Why do you think his fanboys are just constantly being, becoming over obsessed with him today? It's scary to me. This makes all the other characters on the show seem pathetic when you rely on one character to move your plot forward. And it what? really just seems like the Rangers don't. Bruh, what you just said was exactly how I felt. Everybody is too obsessed with Tommy. That's all they ever think about is Tommy. Not no Jason, Zach, Billy, Trino, Kimberly, Rocky, Adam, Aisha, Kat, Tanya, uh, whatever. That's all they ever think about is Tommy. What about the other Rangers? I don't get it. They don't have a lot of weight on their own, or personality even, because they can't carry the show unless they have that one person on the team. So, true. so yeah, that's, it's just, nothing plot related ever really happens unless it involves him, whether it be him getting his powers, losing his powers, getting them again, losing them again, whatever the case may be, a lot of it is, a lot of the plot related stuff in MMPR is just Tommy related, and it's just kind of annoying. The next reason we got here is the characters are all very one dimensional, especially in season one. Oh, it actually yeah. isn't until season three, honestly, where a lot of these rangers start getting some depth and development to them, and they start having little character quirks and things of that nature, and even having some flaws at times. Mighty Morphin guys, in the very beginning, were very dimensional, but one dimensional, and they only had a character trait that really described them, and the only time they had anything different, you know, mentioned about them, was when it was convenient for the plot of the episode to happen. And it was never really overall plot related, but it was just the general plot of the episode 
to kill 30 minutes of your time. And the third reason is, going back to the, the character archetypes, the rangers are very overly goody two-shoes, and that's a trend that's carried over, unfortunately, into Neo Spawn. Holy crap. Bruh. Everything you just said, I felt the same way, too. You said everything that was in the pocket. That's my only crap I had with Season 1 of Mighty Morphin. Was that the character was just too goody two shoes. Like. And yet these fanboys and fangirls think that. Them being role models is a point. But at the same time. We know nothing about the Rangers backstory whatsoever. At least the Power Rangers 2017 film. Even though it's not the greatest. We got every single character development. Then the show could have done 24 years ago. Where the Rangers just are really just good and good all the time. And it really, it doesn't seem very real. And I get that it's television and this is a franchise about giant robots and monsters and witches and stuff like that. But you gotta have some form of realism in terms of the people that are portraying these characters. I mean, to see these kids that hang out together all the time, they never get mad at each other, they never, you know, uh, do bad in school, they're always, you know, volunteering for things. Just to see them be marketed as teenagers with attitude and then not at all. But attitude they were not is really at all. Attitude, not at frankly, all. Frankly, it doesn't make them all that interesting. No. Now, the fourth reason, this goes back to the, all the plot-related episodes that I mentioned earlier, but even plot-related episodes in Mighty Morphin, even if they weren't Tommy-related, they all dragged really long. Like, they stretched oh, really? out plot-related episode at, as long as they could. A good one was the ninja encounter or the, the power transfer, the, the first power transfer from Jason Zack and Trainee to Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. That, that arc did not need to be as long as it did, but for some reason, they just wanted they wanted to kill three episodes on it, you know? Even though one of those episodes is just the Rangers getting free from, uh, or the future Rangers, I guess, getting free from chains only to be tied up again. And there's a lot of episodes like that in MMPR, and it's just really repetitive and boring, and it makes it really not fun to watch. And the last and final reason I got on my list for today is the villains, honestly. The villains ultimately be, uh, end up being a joke, especially in the grand scheme of things, when in terms of where all of the villains are not even that out, ruthless. just in the Zora era that alone. Scary. Rita and Zed play a very small portion in what was going to end up happening a few years later, and in terms of them being threatening, they never really were. I mean, they had very small moments of being threatening, but they never lasted too long. Especially Bruh. Lord Zed, he started... Bruh, I know there's going to be a whole lot of Mighty Morphin fanboys and fangirls are going to have... It's going to be trolling you 24-7 based on what you just said. But, as a person, I agree with what you said. Mighty Morphin wasn't even that great from the start. I mean, like you said about them being goody goods and all the episodes ended up being boring and stuff. Looking back at it now, there were some bad editing in season one of, like, during 1993 episodes around Zoo Ranger footage. And later in season one, the show got a little bit better when it came to the Zoo 2 footage. But at the same time, like you said, all the characters kind of felt boring. But season three, like you just said, also the characters got more development, which is kind of true, because it was more serious. Even though, despite multi-parters, well, it is what it is, man. So, yeah, I mean, I understand where you're coming from too. So. Too, but then kids got too scared of them, so they had to tone them down really quick. And unfortunately, that's just kind of what happened. That's what ruined it. Soccer Mom ruined everything. Like, that was another good example. Rito comes along, he destroys the Thunder Zords, he whoops the Rangers' asses, and then a few episodes later, he's just a bumbling idiot like the rest of them. So, yeah, the villains in MOPR are just a joke, and, and especially compared to just a few seasons later, they really just they can't compare in terms of them being threatening. So, yeah, that's my little list right there. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Uh, and do you agree or do you not? Uh, I mean, you're more than welcome to not agree with me, of course. Uh, leave your comments down in the comment section down below, or you can send... Now, look. You're not the only one who felt the same way. And I, I can tell you this. 
Season one of the Mighty Morphin was not good at all. And a lot of these fanboys are just so, so stuck in the past, they refuse to let the past go. However, when it came to the 2017 Power Rangers movie, everybody is still complaining. Like, like, what's up? Like, what's the deal? This is one of the reasons why the fandom of Mighty Morphin is starting to scare me. Because at the Boom Studio Comics, they got a new comics called Go-Go Power Rangers based on Mighty Morphin. Oh my god, like, enough of Mighty Morphin already! I even wrote a comment on Facebook. How come they can't do other seasons? And one guy replied, because it won't sell. Because when there's Mighty Morphin, it sells. But when there's other stuff, it won't. They try harder! What is so hard about trying other seasons besides Mighty Morphin? Like, it gets too much nostalgia nowadays. And, you know what? I think I'm starting to feel how Anthony Moss Jr., a.k.a. PR Lost Galaxy 2014, how he felt about the whole Mighty Morphin era being the most overrated franchise of all time is true. We barely get any new stuff from other seasons besides Mighty Morphin. Even though the legacy line is Mighty Morphin, we got in space Zeo, Lost Galaxy, no, no, and Donald Thunder coming out soon. But the truth is, these are some dark times when it comes to the Power Rangers. And this is the reason why I'm starting to rant here a little bit because every time I say what I said about Mighty Morphin, every single fair boy and fair girl will attack me. It's like I'm not like it's like it's like I'm I'm never safe on, on Instagram and on Facebook because of a certain Power Rangers website and you know, and on Instagram. Most people agree with me, so most of them don't. Oh, God. Even Tommy is the most overrated range of all time. And, oh, I can tell you this. Any Power Rangers fan will understand where I'm coming from and why I did a reaction to this person. He's basically telling you the truth about how he felt about Mighty Morphin. I can tell you what, as a kid, I used to think Mighty Morphin was good. At the time. But looking back at it now, it wasn't even that good. It didn't even really age well. I mean, come on, man. Like, facts are facts. You may not agree with what I have to say, but it's kind of true. That's one of the reasons why I'm ranting on how stupid, you know, Boom Studios and Bandai of America are being when it comes to Power Rangers because it's been too focused on Mighty Morphin as of lately. Why do you think that it's been driving me crazy? Oh my god. You know what? It's already out there. You know what I'm saying? Look, why do you think they had to reboot the Power Rangers in the first place? I mean, yeah, the reboot is not for everybody, but what what did you fanboys expect really when you when they announced a reboot? In my opinion. If you enjoyed this reaction video, subscribe and leave your comments down below and hit that like button. As always, I'm your host, Demi Huge Reacts. I love y'all. Take care. Peace out, and I'll see you later. Oh, and one more thing. Woman your subs, and I'm out of here.